Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Spine Injury Solutions third quarter 2017 Investors Conference Call. Uh, tonight, your panelists this afternoon, your panelists will be uh, Dr. William Donovan, CEO, Dr. Jeffrey Cronk, Chief Operating Officer, and uh, John Bergeron, Chief Financial Officer. So uh, let me turn this on over to John Bergeron, who will uh, read the uh, forward-looking statements disclaimer. Thank you, Art. This presentation includes forward-looking statements as determined by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. All statements, other than statements of historical facts, included in this presentation that address activities, events, or developments that the company believes or anticipates will or may occur in the future are forward-looking statements. Such forward-looking statements involve known and unknown risks, uncertainties, and other factors which may cause the actual results or performance or achievements of the company to be materially different. Um, such factors include general economic and business conditions, the ability to acquire and develop specific projects, the ability to fund operations, health care services demands, changes in health care practices, governmental regulation, and other factors over which the company has little or no control. The company does not intend and is not obligated to update publicly any forward-looking statements. The contents of this presentation should be considered in conjunction with the warnings and cautionary statements contained in the company's recent filings with the SEC. All right. Hey. Uh, next okay, slide. I'm going to switch this over to Jeff, hopefully. Jeff, you going to really accept it? Sure. Next slide. Okay, Jeff needs to take control of it now. He's got it. Right. So let me know. Let me know that you can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Next slide. Perfect. This is an outline. Uh, uh, this is Dr. Bill Donovan. Back up one, Jeff. Uh, uh, CEO of the company, this is an outline of what we're going to be talking about today. But there's really three main issues. One, we'll do the financial numbers with our CFO, John Bergeron. Number two, uh, we'll introduce Dr. Jeff Pronk, COO, and he's going to handle most of the conference call today. And number three, answer some questions from investors. And I think Jeff's uh, talk and points that he'll discuss will answer a lot of questions that investors have. But I'd like to say just a couple things about Q3. Obviously, we're upbeat uh, because of the following. We put out a press release, oh, 15, 20 minutes ago, and it highlighted our revenues up in Q3 by 23%. Uh, we showed a profit of almost $8,000 versus a loss of almost 180000 last last year, Q3. Uh, we've identified uh, our first out-of-state spin affiliate, and that will be addressed tomorrow in a PR. We have our first out-of-state third-party sales that's pending and is presently in a 90-day trial. Uh, we filed our patent, the EU patent, uh, with the European Patent Office, and uh, we've installed the telemedicine between Odessa and the home office. We've received our trademark for quad video halo technology. And before we get into some other stuff, there's a lot of questions about the patent. The original patent uh, ends in 577 has been issued, and we have that. We've now uh, we have made three more patents. They're called continuation patents. They end in 438, 281, and 123. The uh, patent for the EU, which has been filed, is claiming priority off the 123 patent pending. So that gives you an idea of what we're talking about with the patents. And we work with the, uh, our patent attorneys in Pittsburgh. Uh, next slide. Uh, about spine injury, uh, we're a company that facilitates diagnostic services for patients who sustain spine injuries.
resulting from traumatic accidents. Our goal is to become a leader in providing management services to spine and orthopedic surgeons and other healthcare providers to facilitate proper treatment of their injured clients. By facilitating early treatment through our affiliated doctors, we believe that health conditions can be prevented from escalating and injured patients can be quickly placed on a road to recovery. Since inception, spine injury has funded over 89, next slide, over 89 diagnostic procedures. We have collected, correction, Spine has paid out over $9 million in funding for some 49 million uh, cases for an average period. Next slide. Next slide. I'm going to turn over now uh, the financials uh, to John Bergeron and he'll go over the highlights and then we'll proceed. Thank you. Here's John. Thank you, Bill. During our practice, uh, Dr. Cronk told me, John, this is boring when you try to talk about the, the balance sheet, so I'll try to make this as, as fast as I can. On the, uh, the, the, the snapshot, basically, we, what's, what's important to look at there is that we still have $590,000 to borrow as we try to bring on these new uh, affiliates, so we can do that. Uh, $2.5 million in shareholder equity. Uh, we still have a one-to-one -one current ASO current uh, ratio, so I think that's pretty much it. One thing you'll notice up there is in, it says West Texas. Uh, Lubbock, we try to consider that now to be a West Texas affiliate. Uh, they do refer in a lot of our clients to Odessa. I know we had sent out a press release earlier in regards to Lubbock. Next page, please. Okay, three, three or four things to spot here. One is on the net revenue. We had increased revenue in Odessa and Houston by about 10%. That accounts for the increase. Uh, you'll notice our margins increased from 71 to 68%. We still have strong margins. It was a good mix. Uh, we cut way back this quarter on our marketing expenses, and our legal expenses weren't quite so much, resulting in a lower SG&A. And we didn't have any uh, research and development expenses on the QVH. So the big thing is we made a profit in the third quarter of 2017 versus a substantial loss in the second quarter of 2016. Next page, please. There's the balance sheet that we talked about a little bit ago. You know, we have ample cash. We've got availability on the line to draw on. Uh, we've got a one-to-one -one current ratio. We've got $2.5 million in shareholders' equity. Uh, I guess those are kind of the highlights. Next next page, please. Uh, again, the, the highlights that we have is the uh, we had higher revenues in 17 versus 16 by 23 percent. Our net income was positive versus a loss in 2016, and we had continued gross margin improvement. Uh, and our operating expense, as a result, was higher as compared to a negative last year. Um, I guess I will let Dr. Donovan talk about the uh, highlights and the subsequent events. You know, one thing we need to remember, especially for some people who have been with this company for a long time, if you go back two or three years ago, we needed to have, oh, $850,000 to $900,000 in revenue to break even. Now, when you look at this Q3, we had revenues of about 560000 and had a small profit. We've been able to get the costs down. We've been able to get better settlements, and we're having better cases. I think what this identifies, if we can make a profit, at 560,000 in revenues, think about new affiliates coming on board. They should be able to bring down to the bottom line 
uh, I, I think, quite a bit of money. And that's our focus. Our focus is finding good, strong affiliates. We're not interested in running out right now and open 10 affiliates, uh, affiliates tomorrow. But we're looking for the best affiliates we can get. Uh, next slide. Next slide. Now, when we look at the cumulative cases and the cash collected, we see that we only have about 4.6% 4, 4 of case failures where we had no collection on closing. That bodes well for us because we know our failure rate is under 5%. Next slide. Here we talk about cumulative cases and procedures. I think what's important here, three quarters of these procedures have come from smaller cities, under 200,000, 150,000. And this is where we're really starting to focus. The big, big cities, there's a lot of issues uh, that uh, you, you, you're going against. And we feel that there's a lot of 150,000, 200,000 population cities where we identify strong affiliate doctors. And I think we're now going to turn this over to Jeff because what he's brought on board is an approach that makes sense. Uh, his understanding of what we've been doing over the years, how can we accelerate things, while John and the rest of the uh, company keep the cost down and have a good selection of cases. And we're using the QVH saying, look, we want to find the best doctors who can work with us. Next slide. Uh, Jeff, I'm going to turn the case over. We're excited about having Jeff involved. We're getting a, a new perspective uh, from someone who's been in the business for a long time. And uh, with that, uh, Jeff, we welcome you, and it's all yours. Go ahead. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, John. Um, what I want to start off with is I'm going to try to marry the QVH technology with the affiliate um, uh, program. The main reason why I was brought on was to assist with the affiliate program, and so what I want to do is show you the vision of that program and why that program will be successful. First of all, I know that it, it's – been said, hey, some of this stuff is redundant. I don't know that it is. I don't know that the, the the beauty and the brilliance of this technology is actually really in any way redundant, so I'm going to spend a little bit of time on it so you understand, one, that technology, and then, two, how we bring that into a hub setting. So the biggest thing that we have is called video medical records technology, and that's the quad video halo system, the halo RX, and the QVH care system. So this right here is for pain management, sorry, the quad video halo is for pain management procedures, which I'll explain. Halo RX is for surgical centers, and QVH care is for individual rooms or individual uh, recording of individual procedures, such as patient examination procedures. So what does that actually, you know, what does this technology bring to the table? Well, medical errors are the third leading cause of death in the United States right now. So one in three people that go into a hospital will have a medical error. Now the thing that will change that is video. Video will absolutely change that. There's no question about it. The more that people, uh, if you're a, if you're a investor right now and say, want to say, well, how do we help, uh, spy injury solutions to become a better company? You actually, when you go into procedures and you go in and get a, a procedure that I'll discuss today, you want to ask your doctor, is this procedure going to be video? Right? Because every procedure in the future will be. Video medical records technology, while new right now, will become a very, very common thing, and that's why we're brilliantly placed in the market. 
So video will change that. It will reduce patient errors. It will actually improve patient results because you reduce the errors and it starts to improve patient results because now doctors can take any procedure that they do that's invasive and they can, rule, they, they can review it. So video becomes a quality control. If something goes wrong, you can view, review it to find out why it went wrong. And what went wrong? And it could, it doesn't have to be a new doctor. It could be a very old doctor, a very, very experienced doctor. If something goes wrong, now it can be reviewed so young doctors can learn from it. So it improves education. It improves transparency. Now transparency is an interesting word. It's very interesting when you get into the injury market because what it means is that nothing's hidden. All cards are on the table. There's no hidden agenda. Video doesn't allow for that. Objectivity, it improves, and objectivity is another huge word, word in the injury world. Objectivity means that something can be verified. If it's subjective, it means it's in the experiencer's head, and it can't. So if I ask a, a patient today, how do you feel? They say, I don't feel well at all. No one can verify that. But if I say, well, how much do you weigh? I can put them on a scale, and how much they weigh is very objective. It can be verified. So in the injury world, you want things to be as objective as possible because that's what causes the least amount of problems. So in the injury world, not all sides agree with, with, with the fact that the patient may be injured. Objectivity is what cuts through that. This technology reduces fraud. It reduces unnecessary or procedures that were said that they were done and, and, and weren't done. So it becomes a severe help to the insurance industry itself. Now, just to give you kind of a little bit of an orientation, this is a very modern surgical room. This is a GE modern surgical room. So this right here is called a C-arm. And this C-arm is where the video of the quad video halo would be. This is the most, in a surgical room, this is the most ideal real estate to video a procedure, especially when it's done under this C-arm. RX Halo is anything throughout the surgical room. We can actually place cameras. So this is another picture of it. Again, this is a C-arm, and this is the real estate that our patent allows us to have uh, have uh, dominance over in the fact that it allows us to place video recording devices, lights, other things on this particular piece of equipment, the quad video or the RX Halo is actually throughout the room. Now, there's about 9 million spine injections performed in the U.S. annually. Um, that is a lot of procedures, obviously. So patients are having those procedures every day. Those procedures need to be videoed. Um, again, very, very important in the injury space because what the video medical records technology does is it evolves the medical legal documentation process. See, in the old process, anybody can write down anything, whether it's true or not, or whether it's just a perception. Maybe it's not a falsity that the doctor's writing something down. That it's just a perception that may not be real. Video medical records, anybody can review it to determine what's real and what's not real, what's agreed upon and what's not agreed upon. So video medical record technology, such as the Quad Video Halo, the Halo RX, and the QDH Care, will help to evolve medical, the medical legal documentation process and to improve it significantly. This also improves the benefit determination process that patients go through. When patients are injured, oftentimes insurance is involved and benefit determinations need to be determined. Um, this technology improves that. So let's talk a little about the injury market because that's where we're focused in. We're in the injury market. So in the injury market in 2006, there were 61.2 million visits to a medical provider for an injury. Now, the other statistic I want you to take note of is there were 48 million visits for back pain. Remember, we're in interventional pain, and so back pain is a huge part of that. Injuries, obviously, is a huge part of that. So the C-arm that I showed you that would have the, R, the quad video halo unit on it, is for procedures that occur with traumatic injuries and for procedures that occur with back pain, neck pain, any kind of spine injury itself. 16 million visits in 2010 for neck problems. 
So these markets are huge. In the, in the motor vehicle market, that's a $242 billion market. Um, key figure here, 3.9 million non-fatal injuries. That's a lot of injuries. Total economic cost, $836 billion. Large amounts of money in the injury space. This is just auto. This isn't even work cost. This is just an auto. Now, there's some problems with that. One of the problems that has been kind of a significant problem is that a lot of people don't recover from these injuries. They're probably the number one cause of chronicity in the market today. In other words, chronic pain that doesn't go away. And that's a problem. That's a problem because in the longest study <clears throat> ever performed on whiplash injured patients here, 55% of the patients still had the same problem they had that they started with. Now, that's a doctor issue, and video will also assist with that. When you take the workers' compensation space, again, 61 million traumatic injuries, 48 million on back pain. If we look at the uh, back and neck and wrist and knee are the highest cost injuries. Sprains occur, those are ligament injuries, occur to over 40% of all the lost injuries. So if you take a back injury today, many calculators today place a $50,000 price tag on one back injury. And the total cost down only ends up to over 275000 or more over a three-year period. So these conditions are very, very costly. Um, the market is actually looking for solutions. Now, what I want to talk about a little bit, because in order to understand the hub, you have to understand that there's an injury care ascension ladder. So I spent my career with the conservative care providers. So conservative care providers might be medical specialists such as podiatrists that, that, that determine what a patient has and then try to get it to rehab through physical therapy or chiropractors. Chiropractors are primary care providers and they do an awesome job in general of treating a lot of these injuries and they do it in a highly cost effective way. So these providers need help that our hubs will actually provide services for, which I'll explain, even at that level. So what I spent my career in spinal kinetics, uh, some investors will say, well, how, you know, how much does Dr. Croft look at spinal kinetics and how does spinal kinetics relate to what's going on with spin? I spent my, the last 12, 13, 14 years evolving a process to be able to identify the significance of spinal ligament injuries so that these early providers can actually get a more accurate assessment of what the problem is and treat it better. That's what spinal, spinal uh, kinetics is all about. Now, I want to talk, talk a little bit about the injury market because for investors or lay people, it's kind of an interesting market. It's, it's not something that you would sort of maybe even believe unless you were in it like we are and have been. So this is William Morris. He's the top researcher, one of the top spine researchers in the world. He's published over 200 peer-reviewed studies. He's been cited about 11,000 times. Um, he's written numerous books on the problems with injuries, specific in the injury market of work, workers' compensation. But this relates to the, our injury market we're in. It relates to the hub. So I want to explain it just a little bit. He says in his book, the costly nature of work-related low back pain environment provides an opportunity. Oh, let me get my box out of here just a little bit. It provides an opportunity for the low back pain experts to cash in on their opinions. Opinion is a key word. An opinion is a subjective thing that can't be verified. Uh, any doctor, any lawyer, any, any professional can have an opinion. But that opinion does not have to be what 99% of the other doctor's opinion would be. An opinion is subjective. So experts claiming that their work task was likely the cause of low back disorder can secure a lifetime settlement for the worker. Likewise, experts who contend that there's no relationship between the work and low back pain can potentially save the company millions of dollars in workers' compensation costs. Either way, when large sums of money are involved, there's always incentives for bias on the part of experts. That's the injury market. The injury market usually has two opposing sides using opinions. Now, what Dr. Donovan has done with Spine Injury Solutions is he didn't, he's evolved this. He said, look, when we do procedures, we're going to do procedures under video. We're going to make the total patient encounter video. 
So if anybody has any questions, you can reveal it right on video. Now, that is a very, very pioneering position to take. And a lot of doctors today are not ready or willing to be videoed, right? So when we, when we go to the next, whenever somebody's injured, and the injury is an impairment, it's a derangement of a body part, we specialize more in the spine. And the spine really only has three types of derangements that can cause, in other words, when the spine's injured, there's only really three ways that it, it injures. And William Morris says physical impairment is an objective. Objective means verifiable. These are all verifiable. Assessment of structural limitations, and it's solely a medical responsibility. Now, the hub, as I said, will help doctors of chiropractic, will help physical therapists with these assessments when needed. It relates to a pathological or anatomical loss. These are anatomical losses of position. Pathological just means it's an abnormal process. Or a physiological, that means it doesn't work right, loss or limitation leading to a loss of ability. And when that affects your ability to earn a living, it's called a disability. The U.S. Bureau of Disability Insurance specifies that loss or limitation evaluation be objective and demonstrable by medically accepted clinical and laboratory diagnostic testing procedures. Now, what, when we look at objective, that's where video is huge. Because again, procedures are video. And the procedures that we do with spine injury solutions are diagnostic in nature. They tell exactly the story of exactly where the problem is. Because if that is exactly where the problem is, the injection turns it off. That's how you tell exactly where it is. Now, Quantification of low back impairment. He's talking more about low back. This is the same for neck. Has traditionally been extremely difficult and elusive. Okay, this is the injury market. Quantification of these three things has been extremely elusive. Current impairment ratings of the low back disability vary by as much as 70%. As an example, so what this is saying is there's, there's huge inefficiencies in the market. And they're there simply because you have two opposing sides. Remember I said, hey, whenever there's large money involved, there's room for bias and opinion. Video takes the opinion out. As an example, it shows disability ratings of the same patient by 65 independent medical examiners. The figure shows that the range of disability varied from 0 to 70%. That's a huge variance. The problem with such subjective assessment that lack objective criteria, verifiable criteria, is apparent from a lack of assessment. So when a person's injured today, a lot of times whether it's, it's at work or it's in an auto accident, they're sent out to an independent medical examiner, which I'll explain to you in just a second, how video will change this. Traditional attempts to judge impairments have tried to identify anatomic sources of low back pain. Imaging techniques such as CT, MRI, and myograms are used to assist in the identification of the structure that's been compromised. However, over 85%, over 85% of the number one cause of disability, patients walk out of their doctor's office without a pathoanatomic diagnosis. That means that they don't actually know, the doctor has not determined which one of these they have, or even a combination of what they have. Now, Again, when patients are injured, one, 85% of the, of the patients don't even know what they have by these statistics, and now they can get sent to what's called an independent medical examiner. This is just a cartoon that I picked up. It means no, no, uh, no offense to an independent medical examiner. But I think today a lot of people don't trust in the independent medical examination process because of what's occurred in the market. These, the science behind these procedures say that there's a huge variance. Now, if we stuck a video camera on this procedure and we videoed it, you would see these variances go down significantly. And that's what we're, that's what we're looking to do in the market. So, again, I've spent a lot of time with the primary care providers who are doctors of chiropractic and <clears throat> 
they deliver usually spinal adjustments of some that's usually their primary method of improving a spinal condition and they're very good at it. The company Spinal Kinetics that I, I, I assist with running, we help them to determine where the injuries are. We assist also with the physical therapists and now the new doctors of physical therapy to assist them with knowing if they have a lumbar condition, potentially where that condition is so it can rehab better. Now, let's talk about the Spine Injury Health Centers. The Spine Injury Health Center is just a name. So we needed, I needed to come up with a name, and I already had a name. We already had some intellectual property. So it works well in this. It will help these providers, and I'll show you in just a second. Now, in the future, this isn't right now. We're just starting a test. In the future, in the injury world, examination procedures should be video. Everybody should be able to see that the patient is indeed trying to move or do their range of motion. Everyone should see, be able to see if the patient's not using full effort. Everybody should be able to see that the doctor's recording things properly. Everybody should be able to see what procedures were done, what examination procedures, what orthopedic tests, what neurological tests, what were the results of those tests. Video does all of that. So Smart Injury Health Center is really a, quite an easy concept. It's a concept where we will have a smart injury specialist. That specialist could be an orthopedist. It could be a pain management specialist. It'll be a medical specialist who's capable of examining a patient for very specific injury needs, who's capable of those three things that I just showed you, who's capable of making sure that patients don't walk out undiagnosed, who's capable of actually improving the injury documentation, one, because they're doing the first two things that I just showed, and two, because in some of their procedures, they're using video. Who's, who's able to deliver pain management procedures when needed. So when a conservative case is failing, sometimes there's need for higher interventional services. That's where this hub will come in. And at the last stage of this ascension ladder would, of course, be the surgical procedure. So. When we talk about interventional uh, pain procedures, anybody can Google spinal injections, and you're going to see images of what actually occurs. In a smart injury center, they're going to occur under video, so the whole procedure is actually video. And again, one of the things that we find is that, uh, you know, there's a lot of doctors in the market right now, video is very new, and they don't want to be video. So what we are searching for is those we feel that our, when a doctor is willing to be completely videoed, it's a new level, it's a higher level of doctor, and that's what the injury market needs. It needs the best of the best. Our technology also allows anyone, the patient, the patient's attorney, a jury if the patient determined that they could, anyone can see the full procedure in full high-definition video. Now, our QVH care, that's a, that'd be an individual room um, video uh, application. So let's say the patient was injured and they injured their lower back and the doctor said that it caused nerve damage that couldn't allow the patient any longer to have what's called a patellar reflex or a reflex in the leg. There was that much nerve damage. That could be recorded so that another doctor could say, well, no, I examined them, and, but I found that they did have uh, they did have a, you know, a reflex. Just review the video. This really, really clarifies. And again, on the surgical level, same thing. Um, this technology is very, very impressive. It's very new, and it's what we're what we're taking out and we're positioning in the market now. Now, how does Spine Injury Solutions make money on that? Well, Spine Injury Solutions funds. I put a slide up here that says smart injuries funding. It funds the pain procedures. Uh, it also has the ability of, if it decides, we can, we can uh, fund the diagnostic testing, we can fund the surgeries. Everything can be looked at as, so patients can actually get the services that they need. Um, that hub then gets dropped into an area. We locate an area. This is just an, and this is just a map. 
And what it provides services for, the beauty of the hub, is that attorneys, once they understand what it provides, they will want it. Uh, once the doctors of chiropractic that I've spent my life involved with, um, once they understand what it can deliver, they will want it. And they will provide services at different levels. So they will want the examination procedures. And then if you get them to understand the examination procedure utilization, when they have cases that fail, they will also use the higher interventional procedures. And also the non-medical specialists will actually use it. And that's why we're so excited about it. All smart injury health centers, all, health, all these hubs will actually have available to them all of the video medical records technology. That's what makes them unique. That's what makes them marketable. That's what will allow us to bring them into the market. That's, that's what makes our funding company unique. There's a lot of funding companies, but this makes our funding company very unique. Um, it allows anyone, again, to review the procedures so that when they're trying to determine benefits, I have a picture of lawyers here, young lawyers. When they're trying to determine benefits, it's less of a fight. There's less court time. The procedure of uh, the process of determining venom, vet, uh, patient benefits can be streamlined. We're very proud of that. Um, we're also very proud of the fact, like our new press release will state, that we will be bringing on the first affiliate since I've been here uh, in New Mexico. Uh, we just we have a signed agreement with that, and we will be starting that very, very uh, soon, within the week, I'm assuming. Now, that is it for the presentation that I wanted to show you. I know that there was a lot of questions, and so I guess at this point we would go into any questions or answers. In the future, you're going to see presentations from me like this, very short, very very to the point, um, that just explain one topic or another. So, um, Art, I... I yeah, that's Jeff, all is, as, Jeff, as we go into questions, I just want to say a couple of things about your presentation. Obviously, it's very well organized. It's based on extensive experience. And coming up with ideas of the hub and stuff that really makes sense. We have been presenting this to groups of doctors, and uh, there's been some very interesting responses. Now, there was a couple, there was a slide that Jeff talked about neck injuries. 16.8 million visits per year. Well, one of the things that we have seen with auto accidents, with neck injuries, are concussions. Well, everybody on this call, everybody in the world now knows what the NFL is saying about concussions. And it's really the same thing. An auto accident with a neck injury has a very significant percent of concussions with and or without loss of consciousness. We've now incorporated a new subcompany, Concussions and Spine Injury Solutions, Inc. We have that registered, and we're now going to be incorporating um, We'll start in New Mexico uh, with diagnostic testing and so forth, dealing with concussions, because it's a real issue for the doctors like me and the other doctors who are seeing these patients. Number two, Jeff said that video will reduce fraud. Well, in Houston two weeks ago, one of the big lead articles on, uh, in, in the newspaper and on TV, a large hospital system in Houston paid $1.5 million for, they didn't say it was fraud, but they settled the case for $1.5 million, and it was based on a GI uh, gastroenterology clinic. A whistleblower said the doctors were not doing the test and procedures appropriately. Well, 
all this hospital system, and it's a multi-billion dollar hospital system, with one video camera could have saved a million and a half dollars what they paid, and you think about how much they paid for the attorneys. Way back when we started at John Hopkins, uh, a doctor there in the surgery department said that all procedures should be videoed. This was 2013. In his paper that was in the AMA, JAMA, he identified at the University of Indiana where the GI department decided to videotape a hundred straight cases. They didn't tell the doctors on the first 50 cases. Case 51, the head of the department says, we're now going to be videotaping the, the 50 cases in a row. The quality of the procedure was better. The, uh, the documentation was better. The biopsies that needed to be taken were better. Everything changed with video, just as you would expect. Well, it, it helps reduce fraud. I just want to add that because this just happened in Houston uh, two weeks ago. Uh, let's go to some questions. Okay. Uh, uh, for those of you uh, not aware, you can go ahead and ask questions by going into the, uh, the lower right-hand portion of your uh, module you have there. Just type in your questions. But as it turns out, because of the uh, famous Spin uh, Yahoo chat board, and it's illustrious uh, uh, moderator was an attorney that been involved with us since day one. Uh, they put together a list of 28 questions for uh, for Dr. Kronk. Now, a lot of those I think is already covered. I'll quickly try to read through some of them, and uh, Jeff uh, have a stab at them. But let me hit a few of the other questions first yeah. before we get into this list. Uh, what is QVH care? I know what RX is, don't know what QDH Care is. QDH Care is just an application that actually allows for a room to be videoed and with another room. So it's part of telemedicine today is, is that a doctor could be in a room in front of his computer screen with a computer camera, and somebody else could be in another room with a camera set up, and you could do a consultation there. You could do – so it's a, it's, it's a video. It's a highly uh, secure – it has to be secure today, so – any kind of teleconferencing video systems have to be HIPAA compliant and secure. So it's a very secure portal by which a doctor could actually examine a patient, speak to a patient, have consultation with a patient um, from a distance. Good. So and Dr. we've already, already yeah, we've we already used this. Yeah, we're already using this now. We're connected with Odessa, and we're also going to expand it in the clinic up there. Where we, where the doctor can document a uh, range of motion uh, on an acutely injured patient stored. In other words, it's part of uh, the video storyboard that we feel is ultimately going to be so important with all cases from the treatment at day one. Is there spasm? Uh, is there limited motion? Video stored. Is there uh, x-rays? Is there a fracture? Store it. Is there an MRI? You store it. Is there an injection? Store it. Uh, these are all video storage into Box.com, which is our uh, HIPAA compliant. And the connections that we're using is uh, by Via3, uh, which uh, is a HIPAA compliant uh, type of, uh, of, uh, of the uh, a telemedicine, and we've been working on that, and we're actually ad adapting it uh, to some other applications. Okay, uh, so we're really talking about telemedicine now. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure, uh, absolutely. Actually, here's, here's a short question that preambles a rather longer one, but they tie in nicely. What's the chances of getting – good that you got the first affiliate this year. What's the chances to get a second affiliate yet this year? Like a new affiliate. Uh, well, that, uh, we certainly that that is, that is definitely the goal, and I I think we have good opportunity to do that. 
Very good. Now here's here's the longer question, which yeah. I was somebody was so eager to put it out because they they actually typed it in as well. Uh, six months ago, uh, on May 15, Dr. Donovan stated the company has set a target to as many as 10 or 12 affiliates over the next 18 months. Taking consideration, a very welcome news today of the addition of the first out of out of Texas third party sale. The addition. What other information should encourage investors the company will hit the target of 10 to 12 uh, with uh, at least 12 good, strong affiliates? And that's uh, Dr. Ryan's question. Okay, so the question is, what, the, the target from six months ago was 12 to 18, and what's my what over, my, no, over the next yeah, Over the next uh, 8 to 12 to 18 months. The next 10 12 to 18 months? 10 to, 12, 10 to 12 affiliates over the next 18 months. Yeah, so. I think we're right on track. Good. So what, what I'd say is when, anytime you're bringing on something new, um, you have to test that model. We're in, we'll be in testing on the model, and you test it to make sure that you've got all the kinks. Like, like Dr. Donovan said, we're not interested in bringing on 10, 12 right today. Right? Because, one, we want to make sure that they're good providers, and, two, we want to make sure that all of our procedures are sound so that those procedures can be scaled so that you can massively now start to enter into the market by scaling. So. That's a great question, and I think uh, it'd be a, it'd be a better question for me to answer, giving one more quarter. So, give me one more associate, or one more affiliate, an affiliate that we just have, or more. We may even bring on more. I'm not saying limiting it to two. Um, before I would say, hey, how 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 healthy or how uh, how was that target? I'd say it's it's a target we're going to continue to have. I think it's a great target. And let's go on to a few of these other questions on the big list while we wait to maybe get yeah. some other people to answer some interim questions. Okay, uh, Dr. Kronk, what is the measure by which we as shareholders should judge your performance between now and the next earnings call? And also, I'm going to put two questions together here because they're short. What's the next measure? Uh, what is the measure that you expect your employer to judge you by as well? Well, by improvement. I mean, I was brought on to assist with bringing on Hawks, so... The, the way I'll be judged is by how well we bring on hunts. Okay. Uh, with regard to third-party sales of the Halo technology outside of Candy Affiliates, what is SPIN's marketing plan? If SPIN has one, what is the status of past marketing plans and distributor agreements? I don't know what Candy is. That's, that's a, <laughs> they actually did say Candy. <laughs> That's that's another stock that, that many of the same shareholders actually own. But I'm, I just read the way. But I, I think he meant to say outside of spin affiliates. <laughs> so what what is the general the general question is is what's the market about the third third party sales third party sales? Just, um, just the, the general general opinion on third party sales. The general opinion on third party sales is we're open to third party sales. We're focused on the hub. Uh, Third-party sales under the right conditions can provide us with case studies that can make it easier to bring on the hubs. And I think we did allude that we're going to be – we've got one already, or it's uh, – No. It's, yep. And, yep. and, and that's, that's another – out. Of, that's also out of state as well, a third state. So That's okay. in Louisiana. That's correct. But it's in a 90-day uh, – whatever you would call it, a 90-day process before there will be a sale. Okay. Okay. Uh, Let's see. Have, uh, have any spin employees left the company in the past 90 days? No. 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 Okay. To your knowledge, has the company been notified that any claim, the question of spin halo technology and its related patents? Uh, we defer that one to Dr. Donovan. I ha I, I'm not aware of any. There were a couple instances where some people were trying to make claims. We contacted our attorney. He took care of it. They all disappeared. And then we, we added more. In other words, from the original patent, we've changed and improved the halo quite a bit with David, uh, Spencer. And that's why when at the beginning I, I listed all these, uh, uh, continuation patents and the continuation patents have all the new things that we put into it. So um, we anticipate, and then obviously EU patent has been uh, filed, and that's based on one of the continuation patents that was actually
actually filed in September 2017. So, uh, the, and this means it's claiming priority to the continuation patents. So, uh, the, the, the attorneys are very, out of uh, Pittsburgh, they're very aware of, um, uh, of the value of this uh, of the TVH, and these are attorneys at Kevin Weiss, Benuri, and Hirsch, uh, three Gateway uh, Center, uh, Liberty Avenue in Pittsburgh. Okay, next question. Uh, to what extent are you concerned about this? I guess Dr. Kronk, about competition to spin his primary areas of collections, the Halo technology and affiliate model. Well, we're always concerned with competition, but in the in the in the area of of I, I'm assuming what the investor is talking about is the in the area of funding injury funding, there's a lot of injury funding companies, but there's not any injury funding company in the country that would have the quad video halo or have the video medical records technology that we have. So even though there are a lot of funding companies, there are none that have the kind of uh, video technology that we have. So it's kind of a difficult question to answer. Uh, yes, there's competition, and no, when you start to chunk this out, um, there's really not any competition when it, when we narrow it down to specifically what we do. I would like to add just to that, yeah, there's a lot of funding companies. The funding companies don't have technology that will help the doctor get new patients. They're just a funding company. They come in, okay, we'll buy the air, here's some money, and be on your way. What we're saying to the doctor, yes, we'll purchase your AR. However, we have this technology that I, we believe will help you get additional new patients because people are very aware of what video technology is all about. Ask all the policemen <laughs> You know, they wear the body cams. Absolutely. So uh, we're we're different. Yeah, we're a funding company, but we're saying to the doctor, we have technology that we believe will help you get more patients, and that's what doctors want, more patients. Okay, another for Dr. Cronk. Presumably you've had a chance to examine SPIN's operation over the past year. Uh, putting collections aside, what are your takeaways with regard to why third-party sales and saying new affiliates had not materialized or, or been more robust despite past enthusiasm by management. Do you feel comfortable in making this assessment in the presence of other spin employees, including Dr. Donovan? Yeah, I feel very comfortable. So the answer to that question is and I, I feel very comfortable with, with making any assessments in front of any employees, anybody that's in, in the company of spin or in the quad video halo. As far as assessing uh, why uh, right now, we just brought on the first. We brought on a first, and we're going to be pursuing more. So, and I'll be assessing that and understanding it more and more as we go. So, you know, I, I guess what I'd say to that is that we're in the continuous assessment. Obviously, as a company, we want to grow. We want to improve. And so we're going to be assessing that as we go. Okay. Uh, this has to do with you updating your LinkedIn uh, profile. You need to update it. So that's not really a question, just a reminder. <laughs> yeah, uh, somebody has said that to me earlier. I, I don't deal with my LinkedIn hardly at all. So even though I, I, I have to. Yeah. Okay, under what circumstances do you recommend the selling of the, of the Halo technology and its related patents? I would imagine that we would look at that as an irresistible offer. <laughs> we got to... We got an outlandish offer. I'm sure, uh, you know, that would be presented to the board and the board would make decision. Right answer. Okay. Uh, what is your current vision for the end game for spin as a company? E.g. sale, expansion, or what? Either or. It, 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 obviously expansion and then if, if, if we expanded to the point where somebody said, hey, I want that, then the board of directors would have to make a determination and the shareholders would have to make a determination. Well, I think you answered this next question already. It says, do you have any concerns about your ability to perform duties free of undue pressure or supervision by other employees of the company or the board, including Dr. Donovan? Yeah, <laughs> I answered I that already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. 
A few shareholders have, uh, have shared their concern that notwithstanding the outside business expertise, the Spins financial standing of members represented on Spins Board of Directors, that except for one in particular, have not taken a proactive role visible to shareholders in Spins business execution, nor has there been any evidence they publicly increased their stock holdings in the company. Can you comment? No, I wouldn't comment for the other shareholders. I mean, uh, uh, the shareholders would have to comment for themselves, and I'm, I'm not um, – yeah, I, I just wouldn't comment on that. I don't know the, the contributions and the, the minds of the other board members. Other than accounting in the ordinary course of business by SPIN's retained accounting firm, has there been or do you perceive the need for any auto review of SPIN's financial records and operations given the lack of pro progress made, third-party sales, and an increase in the number of affiliates? No, none, none, none that I would – not to my awareness, no. It wouldn't, that wouldn't be necessary. Okay, uh, what, what is the current procedure in place at the company? Should you determine the need or advisability, legally mandated or otherwise, to PR certain developments within SPIN? Uh, asking that question again, what is the what? I think the answer is you put, you can put out, you as COO, uh, can put out a PR, but it would probably be approved by everyone. I think that's all they're asking. Uh, the by, by the, the process, that, that question is what's the process of a PR being approved? Yeah. Yeah, I think that the, what is the current procedure in place of the company? Should you determine the need or advisability, legal mandate or otherwise, to PR certain developments within SPIN? I guess they're saying, do you have to go out, do you have to get approval to do it? Uh, yeah, I would definitely. If, if you were asking me as a shareholder, what, do, would I need to get approval? I would say yes at the point. At this point, uh, am I going to go get an approval? Yes. I'm going to go right to Dr. Donovan and and say, hey, I think this would be a good idea for a press release, and then we're going to talk about it and decide what we want to release. Uh, they're not going to give you both keys to the nuclear silo right away. Okay, uh, do you or Dr. Donovan have the final approval decision on press releases? Uh, that, 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 that goes in the same one. Let's go on to another question. Uh, I was browsing the Internet the other day, did a search of SPIN, uh, Halo Technology and its current product offering. If it's such a great mousetrap, can you explain why they're uh, – Little or no hits commenting or discussing on the patents, or the technology, or the products. Well, I tell you what, I don't know what the investor is looking at. I don't. I don't. I, I wouldn't know. I, I mean, I wouldn't know how to answer that. I don't know what the searches that they did. I do a lot of searches. I do a lot of different things on the internet as far as uh, research goes. So I have no idea. I I, I, I can't even comment on that because I, I don't know what they're looking at. Okay, let's move on. Has SPIN made any effort to bring in third-party consultants or knowledgeable in the industry to assess SPIN's current business execution and make recommendations? If not, is that warranted given the past absence of execution with regard to third-party sales of the Halo technology and the secure of additional affiliates? I just want to add here, a lot of these, some of the, the mood may have changed a bit here, and I think we surprised some people. We got me surprised some people by getting affiliates online here since you've been on board, but I don't think you have to get in depth on that. I think I can't speak to the past, and I, I, it's not needed right now. Right. Okay, to your knowledge, has SPIN received any interest? Well, I think that was asked once in another way, for purchasing the company or its assets. Uh, I would defer that one to Bill, if possible, um, because I'm not, I'm not aware, I'm, I'm aware of the fact that there's been some talk of it, but I'm not, I, I wouldn't be one to speak of it. I know that there's, there has been some looks or a look, um, but I would not, I would not be the one to discuss it. I would imagine some of the multi-billion dollar quote unquote competitors financing companies that just do plain financing would love to get their hands on the quad video halo. Yeah, I, I don't have personal experience with that yet, so I couldn't speak to it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think that pretty much covers everything. That, uh, the few other questions I think uh, were actually incorporated within the uh, within your presentation. But okay. let me see if we've got any more questions here in the. We don't have any more in the online. So, I guess that ought to do it. If you want to uh, make some closing comments, gentlemen? Yeah, this uh Dr. Donovan. Um, I want to thank John. I want to thank Jeff uh, for being on this call. 
and I want to thank all of my members and staff uh, for what they've done uh, over the years, and especially Q3. We have to go back and look at the history. As I said, two to three years ago, it took us to have revenues of almost 900 grand to break even. We're now down revenue of 560, 560,000 with a small profit. So the team has done a good job in reducing cost, increasing settlements, identifying better cases. This is important to carry over with new affiliates because then we can really have some serious numbers uh, coming down, real numbers, uh, to the bottom line. I want to thank our investors uh, for being part of this call and being investors. Uh, as a doctor in practice for many years, I see the changes happening in medicine. Video is going to happen. Uh, the customer, the patients are demanding it. And it actually, video makes all of us better doctors. And uh, uh, I, I think the, the future of video is very, very strong in healthcare. And I welcome Jeff on the terrific uh, call today, Jeff. And I appreciate you. you for all your your time and effort. And you just stay in, I want the investors to stay in touch with us. Uh, we treasure our investors, and we want to do everything possible to provide the best care for those of us who are affiliated doctors, and the company provide a vehicle, the video technology and so forth. And I think concussions uh, that go with the neck injuries are going to become a, a big part of this. Nobody's talking about concussions in auto accidents, but let me, they, they, it happens. And we're working with some good concussion people now to come up with something that makes sense because we're already treating these patients and we need to come up with the right things that make sense for everybody. So we hope to see you in three months. May everybody have a safe Thanksgiving and a great holidays. And we thank you very much for being on the call. Jeff, any last Have a comments? great day. No, thank you very much. Okay. Well, we'll see you all in uh, a few months. Well, I guess the next one will be our year end. Uh, thank you, and uh, goodbye to all.